In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the Dyn Topo feature in Blender's sculpt mode. If you'd like to learn the basics of sculpting in Blender, then definitely check out my Sculpting with Blender for Beginners tutorial with the link in the description, and you can also check out my Sculpting tutorial playlist to watch more of my sculpting tutorials. So I love using the Dyn Topo feature when I'm doing sculpting in Blender, because the Dyn Topo feature will add geometry to your mesh as you're sculpting. So I'm just going to start by deleting everything, and I'll press Shift A. I'm I'm going to go here to mesh and I'm going to add an icosphere. You can add whatever object you want for the sculpting. And then right above me on the add icosphere settings, I'm just going to turn up the subdivisions to like a six so that it is pretty detailed. And I'm using my Hueon drawing tablet for the sculpting and I would definitely recommend using a drawing tablet for sculpting if you're able to. There are so many benefits to using a drawing tablet for sculpting which I go over in my beginner sculpting tutorial. But some of the main reasons why I recommend using a tablet is because you have much better posture and you're able to make nice smooth strokes and you're also able to use the pen pressure in the pen to control the strength and radius. And I will have Amazon links in the description to some tablets that I recommend and those are affiliate links so purchasing something through those links will help me out. So with the object selected, you can just click right here on the sculpting workspace and it's going to take you into sculpt mode of the object. And then a question that I often get in the comments is how to mirror the sculpt. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag and kind of bring the settings over and you want to turn on the symmetry option. And usually you're going to want to turn on the X symmetry and so that'll mirror what you're sculpting. So like if you're creating a character's head and you want to mirror it to the other side, you can use that option there. So this mesh is somewhat detailed, but you can see as I start to sculpt, it's actually not that high quality. You can actually see the individual faces. So this is why the Dyn Topo option is so helpful. So I'm just going to check mark this little box here next to the Dyn Topo setting and then you can just click on OK. So now that the Dyn Topo feature is enabled, I can start to sculpt and it's actually going to add new geometry as I sculpt. And just to show you, I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe view and you can see as I sculpt it's actually adding more geometry. So you can kind of see how the geometry is right over here. It's kind of low poly, but then as I sculpt, it's adding much more geometry. Now if you click on the Dyn Topo settings right here, you can change the detail size. Now if you have the detailing set to relative detail, if you turn down the detail size, it's going to be more detailed. So for most things that I'm sculpting, I like to use a detail size of 3, and now if I start to sculpt, you can see how detailed that is. But if you add too much detail, then your sculpting might start to get kind of laggy, so you might need to change the detail size depending on your computer performance. Um, 3 works great for me, but also right here I could maybe turn this to like a 6, and now you can see it's not quite as detailed. You can kind of see the detail difference from here to here, but it is still pretty detailed. Now if you don't like seeing the flat shading and you want it to instead be smooth, you can click right here on the Dyn Topo and then you can click on Smooth Shading. And so now you can see that Smooth Shading has been applied, but I can continue to sculpt. I usually don't really like using the Smooth Shading because I actually like to see the geometry. You can see with the Smooth Shading it kind of looks a little bit blobby and a bit low quality. So when I'm sculpting I usually turn the Smooth Shading off, but you can turn on the Smooth Shading if you'd like to. Now if you click on the Dyn Topo settings, there are some different different detailing types. So the first one is relative detail, and so this is going to add detail depending on how far away you are. So if I zoom way in, I can sculpt really close, and you can see that it's adding much more detailed geometry. So if I want to sculpt something which is very detailed, I can zoom in very close, and it's going to continue to add more and more detail the closer that I get. Or if I zoom out, if I zoom farther away and then sculpt, you can see that it's going to be much less detail. So you can especially see the difference right here. So this is where I was zoomed out, and then this is where I was zoomed very close up. So you can see it gets more detailed or less detailed depending on how far away you are. Now if I click back here on the Dyn Topo settings and go to the detailing, the next one is constant detail. So this one isn't going to change the detail depending on how far away you are. The entire mesh is always going to be the same amount of detail. Now as I start to sculpt, you can see that it's actually very low quality, and that is because if I click on the Dyn Topo here, the number is actually going to be the opposite. So instead of a smaller number, giving it more detail, a larger number is going to give it more detail. So for the constant detail, I would use like a resolution of 100, and then you can start to sculpt and you can see how detailed that is. But if I zoom in closer and then sculpt, you can see the detail size isn't changing. Even if I zoom in really close, you can see it's not adding any more detail, 
or if I zoom really far out, you can see it's still the same amount of detail. It doesn't change when I zoom in or out. So that is the constant detail. Now also, if you click right up here on the Dyntopo settings, you can see next to the resolution on the constant detail, there's a little eyedropper. And so if you want to use an amount of detail that you're already using in a different spot, you can click on the eyedropper and then you can choose somewhere on the mesh. So I'm gonna choose a very detailed spot like right down here. And so now that I've picked that area, I can start to sculpt and you can see it's going to be much more detail because it selected that amount of detail using the eyedropper. So that resolution that I picked was about 250. Or if I wanted it to be lower detail, I could click on the eyedropper and I could, for instance, choose this area here and that one is about 120 and then I can start to sculpt and you can see it's going to be that amount of detail. Now the next one is the brush detail and this is going to change depending on the brush size. So I can press the F key to make my brush bigger. I can make it really big and then I can sculpt you can see how big that is or I can press the F key and make it much smaller and now that it's really small you can see it's much more detailed so this is going to change the detail depending on the brush size and also if you click here on the Dyntopo settings it does have a detail percentage so if I wanted everything to be more detailed I could just turn the detail percentage down and now if I sculpt you can see it's much more detailed but if I press the F key and make my brush much smaller I can start to sculpt and you can see now that is very detailed and actually that's so detailed that it's getting kind of laggy when I'm sculpting. Now on the detailing, you can also change it to a manual detail. And when you change it to manual detail, there's gonna be a detail flood fill button. And so if you click this button, it's going to make the entire mesh the same detail. So for instance, let's say I wanted the entire mesh to be this amount of detail. I could change this to manual detail, then I could click on the eyedropper and I could just select that detail amount. And you can see that is about 170. And then I could click on detail flood fill and it might take a moment to load up but it's basically going to go over the entire mesh and it's going to change it so that it's all that amount of detail and it finished so now you can see that all of the mesh is the same amount of detail but it's still done the best job that it can to keep the shape of the geometry now let's say that you're sculpting a very detailed mesh like this here, and let's say that it starts to get super laggy. Like in this case here, you can see I'm trying to sculpt, but because the mesh is so detailed, it's getting quite laggy. Well, there's a really cool method that you can use to make the geometry much less detailed, but keep the object shape. And to do this, we're gonna click here on sculpt mode, and we're gonna go back to object mode. And right down here on the bottom bar, it's actually gonna show you the amount of vertices and faces that it has, and you can see this is a pretty detailed mesh. So what you can do to make the mesh lower detailed is you can go right over here to the modifier properties. You can then click on add modifier and under generate, you can add the decimate modifier. So the decimate modifier is going to get rid of more and more the topology, but it's going to do the best job that it can to keep the object shape. So if I wanted the mesh to only be half as detailed, I could click on the ratio here and I could turn this to like a 0.5 and then it might take a moment to load up as it calculates it. And so it's finished calculating and you can see the mesh pretty much looks exactly the same, but there's actually half as much of the geometry. So I could now click on the arrow here and I could click on apply and again, it might just take a moment to load up. So now that that is finished, I can make this smaller and I can click right here on object mode and go back to sculpt mode. And then when you go back to sculpt mode, it is gonna turn the Dyn Topo off. So I can just click on this and then click on okay to turn it back on. And so I can now continue to sculpt and you can see it's much less detailed because I've gotten rid of half of the topology, but the object is still keeping its original shape. So that's it, that is the Dyn Topo feature in Blender. So it's a really great tool for adding geometry as you're sculpting in Blender. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn the basics of sculpting in Blender, then you can definitely check out my Sculpting with Blender for Beginners tutorial, and you can also check out my Sculpting tutorial playlist to watch more of my sculpting tutorials. And if you'd like to help support this channel, I'll also have links in the description to my Gumroad and my Patreon and the YouTube memberships. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.